Why? Can you not be so bright, Mr. Sun? It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my wrap up for November 2023. I read a total of 12 books this month so I will be splitting this wrap up into two separate parts. Listen, I know that this wrap up is coming very late into December and I didn't even put up a November TBR but, but a lot of things happened in the month of November. I got a new job, my grandmother passed away, just things that made me not want to film. So we're here now. And that's all that matters, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars to, so we kicked off the month very well. But it is The Inheritance Game by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I loved this book so much, and it's been on my TBR since it came out, and I've just been putting it off because it was so hyped, and I'm a little upset that I did that because I loved it. This follows Avery Grahams, who after the death of her mother has been living with her half-sister Libby, trying to make enough money to go to college. Then she receives an invitation to travel to Hawthorne House to read the will of the deceased billionaire Tobias Hawthorne. When she arrives, it appears that he has left his entire estate to her, even though she has never met him or any of his family before. The only stipulation put in place is that Avery must live at the estate for a year. She doesn't think that it's going to be too hard, but she didn't take into account that the four brothers, their mother, and other various family members would also be residing there. As she spends more time with the brothers, she quickly realizes that there are puzzles and riddles around every corner that may actually explain this new development in her life and it's like the story of that. So like I said I put off reading this book for a very long time because I was so scared that I wouldn't enjoy it as much as other people which I don't know why I always think this way because I do usually. There were so many twists and turns in this book. I loved going through the mystery with these characters. I loved trying to piece together the puzzles and figure them out alongside Avery and the brothers. I also really loved the short chapters. I found that it made the book a lot easier to read and more digestible. The biggest complaint I probably have for the book is the romance. I could have done without it. It felt very forced and bland in my opinion. I just want more puzzles, thank you. I did call the ending of the book very early on in it, but that didn't hinder my enjoyment and I will definitely be picking up book two very shortly because this was a lot of fun and I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Lane Fargo is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. I just find their writing to be so much fun. But this one follows Scarlett who is a successful English professor at Gorman University. For the past few years, she has been spending her days teaching and her nights murdering men without detection. When people start questioning the growing body count on campus, she decides that she is going to join the investigation to keep herself in the loop. A freshman named Carly is slowly developing feelings for her new roommate, Allison Hadley, and then one night at a party, Allison is assaulted, and so Carly decides to take matters into her own hands, and it kind of follows those two storylines. So like I said, Lane Fargo is quickly becoming a favorite author of mine. I read Temper by her a couple years ago and it was on my top books list for that year. This one definitely joining top books of 2023. I flew through this book. I find her writing style to be so enjoyable. It is so fast-paced and easy to read. It also has very short chapters which keeps the reader engaged. I am a sucker for a revenge plotline, so I ate this up. I loved both point of views between Scarlett and Carly and how their stories interwove together. I will say that I definitely enjoyed Scarlett's point of view a lot more than Carly's, but I still found both of them to be very interesting. I just find Scarlett to be such an intriguing character. I know you're not supposed to root for her because she's like a literal serial killer, but I couldn't help it. Like, I love her. I also just loved how funny she was. Some of the inner thoughts that she had made me laugh out loud. I just couldn't get enough of her. I was so invested in her story and where it was going to go. Honestly, I just think that this needs to be turned into a movie or a TV series like ASAP. I would watch the shit out of that. Highly recommend this book. If you haven't read it already, I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's so good. 
Next up, I read The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephine, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the sequel to The Storm Crow, and it basically picks up exactly where The Storm Crow left off. I will say that I enjoyed the first book a little bit more than this one. The first half of the book was a little bit rough for me, but I did enjoy my time reading a lot more in the second half. A big focus in this duology is depression, and I think that the author does such a great job with the representation of that. I think that is handled with a lot of respect and care, and that's probably one of my favorite parts of this duology. If you saw my review of the first book, then you would know that one of the biggest complaints I had for it was the relationship between Callius and Thea. I was not the biggest fan of the romance that seemed to be brewing between them, and I'm very glad to report that things went the way that I wanted them to. I don't consider that to be a spoiler. If it is, sorry, this book is like a thousand years old, so you should have read it by now. <laughs> I also think that Thea is just a really great main character. She goes through a lot of character development in this, and I think that it was really well done. But my favorite part of the book was definitely Rez, Thea's Stormcrow. He is just such a comic relief. I think he is so cute, and I would definitely pick up a book that is just about Rez's antics, because he is just such a little cutie. I did like the first book more than this one. I think I give the first one a 4 and I give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next book I have is Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna and this is another one I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place in the town of Bishop which is surrounded by sunflowers. It's known for its frequent storms and missing women. The mothers of four teenage girls go missing on the same night and now a few years later a memorial is being held for them. The four girls decide to to start an investigation behind what actually happened to their mothers and they uncover some very dark secrets that the men of the town have been hiding. I was initially drawn to this book because of the cover. I think it is gorgeous. It gives me very much Wilder Girls by Rory Power vibes. This is told in multiple point of views between the four girls. It had a full class audio, but it was still very hard to distinguish the four girls from each other. They were all seemed very similar in my opinion. I think that the concept behind this book was very interesting, and I think if it was executed better, it would have been amazing. The main complaint that I have is that none of this really made any sense and nothing was explained at all to the reader. I think that the eeriness of the town was very well done and the vibes were there, but I just think that this could have been so much more than it was. There was also not one good male character in this. Literally all of them were evil, which was a choice in my opinion. I just find that trope to be a little bit annoying because in a town full of people. There's got to be at least one that is not a piece of shit. But yeah, I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was what it was. Could have been a lot more. The next book I have is actually a children's book, which is so stinking cute. It's called Party Pooper, and it is by Jennifer Gray Olson. I loved this book. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. It's a picture book to teach young readers about making mistakes and taking accountability for your actions. It is a very cute read. It features a little angry grumpy panda named Paul who made me so happy even though he was being a little bit naughty at times. I think it's so cute. Definitely recommend for like nieces or nephews, sons, daughters that are on the younger side. So cute with a really good message. Four out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about is Thin Air. This is by Kelly M. Parker and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows 17 year old Emily who has cheated her way into a scholarship competition that involves a trip to Europe with 11 other hopeful students. As they board the flight in Chicago, they quickly realize that somebody on board is going to do anything in order to win, even commit murder, and it's kind of the story of them trying to survive. I was really intrigued by this because I recently found out that I am a big fan of the locked door trope. I think that this started off very promising. I was very invested in the beginning, but I quickly lost interest, especially after the fact that Emily is so focused on the boys in the competition. Even after people start being murdered left, right, and center, she's just like solely focused on, you know, getting that, getting any boy on that flight. I was very interested in the two truths one lie concept of this book because I remember playing that as a kid all the time and I just thought it was so much fun. But the ending was a little bit unsatisfying in my opinion. It just felt like it came out of nowhere. It didn't really make sense in my opinion. There was no lead up, there was no hints 
to this ending happening, so it was just kind of out of left field. So I was a little bit disappointed in the direction that the author decided to go in. I definitely don't think this was a bad book. I think it was just an average book, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first six books that I read for the month of November 2023. I will film and edit part two as quickly as possible and get that up for you guys. There probably will not be a December TBR at this point just because it's already the middle of December and my grandmother's funeral is in like two days so I just don't really have time or motivation to do that so sorry you will get December wrap-up eventually but probably no TBR. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!